Hi right, folks. Uh, Would you walls from BeatCoffee.com here. Back again for another Way Home a Review. Uh, for the uninitiated, here's how it works. I have just left the cinema. That's that over there. Got some air going here a little bit. It's December and it's 70 degrees. I know it's awesome, but it's still kind of like, really? 50 or 60 would be fine. Anyway, so uh, I've just left the cinema. I've seen the film and I'm going to tell you about it on my way home. It just saves time that way. And today we're here to talk about Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. All right, uh, Ghost Protocol, what can we say about it? Um, okay, so here's the deal. Ethan Hunt, AKA Tom Cruise, with shaggy hair, is uh, still a super spy badass who has got a new team, mostly, and uh, finds himself on the, I mean, this isn't a trailer, I'm not giving anything away, finds himself on the wrong end of the Kremlin blowing up. I suppose there was a right end to that, you know. Uh, but basically, his team and him get tagged with the destruction of the Kremlin, and that pushes the world towards uh, world war. Uh, and uh, on top of that, there's a megalomaniac who is behind the whole thing, and um, the IMF, the Impossible Mission, whatever, uh, force, I forget what they're called, um, gets disavowed again, and they basically have to prove their innocence and save the world and stop the megalomaniac guy and all that stuff. So pretty much a typical day at work for these folks. That's pretty much, that's, that's a good synopsis right there. So here is the deal with, um, you're welcome. Here is the deal, I'm talking to the people I just let in. Uh, here is the, uh, but you're welcome too, all of you. Uh, here's the deal with Mission Impossible movies and me. In a nutshell, the first one was okay, all right? It was all right, um, the, uh, but it wasn't great. Uh, the second one was shite. Uh, it was egregious shite. And uh, I was so angry at the second one because of, I, I get very, in case you haven't figured it out yet, I get very angry. Are you coming in or what are you doing? Come in after coming in. It, we're, we are in a section of Atlanta that is that has a lot of shops. And if you saw on the date, it is the middle of December, which means that this place is like, you know, it's insane. So traffic is nuts. Anyway, um, that was the thing. Oh, the second one, I was just very, I get very angry when you have characters act like characters would never act. Um, which is why I'm dreading Dragon Tattoo, even though I want to see it. But anyway, so I was so upset with Mission Impossible 2, I did not go see, nor have I seen Mission Impossible 3. Because I said they got me twice, there's no way in hell they're going to get me a third time. Now, as I understand it, they brought both Philip Seymour Hoffman, because this is Tom Cruise, because Tom Cruise wanted me to see the film, because Tom Cruise watches these, of course. And, uh, see, my, my camera person's allergic to even me talking about Mission Impossible 2. That's how bad the film was. It's true. It's so true. Um... I'm, I'm feeling a bit, you know, my throat's closing up as well. Anyway, so Mission Impossible 3, they brought in Philip Seymour Hoffman and Simon Pegg, as I understand it, in an attempt to get me to see the film, knowing what affection I have for both actors, and I still didn't go see it. Then, the way I looked at Ghost Protocol was, they weren't playing fair. They weren't playing fair at all, because in addition to bringing back Simon Pegg, okay, they brought in Brad Bird to direct it. Now, Brad Bird... That may, may, may not mean anything to you. If you dig animation, it means something to you. Because, okay, Iron Giant, which I'm one of five people on the planet that don't worship that film, uh, it was okay. But The Incredibles was awesome. The Incredibles is the Fantastic Four film you're never going to see, right? And I thought, oh, oh, this is what you've been doing instead of my Incredibles sequel, Mr. Brad Bird. Okay, fine, I'll go see your movie. Fine, I'll show you, I'll go see your movie. So I went to go see the movie. And I was going into this thing with Brad Bird being the main draw for me. 
Because even though I like Tom Cruise, okay, even when he's not playing a crazy character, even when he is shaggy-haired Ethan Hunt, I like Tom Cruise, okay? Like Simon Pegg. Looks like I'm going to be liking Jeremy Renner a lot because of, between this and, and Hawkeye, I dig him. But I'm just going, okay, really? Are we doing this again? Are we doing the, we're the good guys, but we've been disavowed, and we're on the run from the good guys and the bad guys, and we're doing that again? Really? I mean, for crying out loud, they're doing it again in the G.I. Joe sequel. So it's like, and I, weren't, I, I think maybe the first one, wasn't the first one that, oh, Ethan, we think you're the bad guy? How many times can you have the hero become the bad guy? I mean, what is this, Marvel Comics? Anyway, so I went into this with a lot of trepidation because I'm going, oh, man, I think, he, can Brad Bird really, well, not just Brad, I mean, because he didn't do everything, but can Brad Bird really lead this team of people to creating a film that is worthy of, you know, <clears throat> having the explodo that you would want from a Mission Impossible film? And here's what I would have to say. And commenters, I expect you to back me up on this and, and let me know. I will watch the third film if you can go watch the fourth film and tell me that it's as good as the fourth film. If the third film is as good as the fourth film, I will make a point of going back and watching it. And I keep hearing people say that, you know, well, the, the third film is the best of the three, is what I always heard. But really, I mean, come on. Phantom Menace was the best of the prequels. That doesn't mean you should go see it, right? So, but anyway, fourth film, here we are, finally talking about the fourth film now. What you want from a Mission Impossible film is you want stuff that is crazy, because it's in the title, Mission Impossible, right? So many times the joke has been made about it can't possibly have been Mission Impossible, because if it were Mission Impossible, they wouldn't have succeeded. It's quite obvious it was Mission Impossible. Very, very old joke. However, you at least want to get on the cusp of sanity with stuff, because otherwise it's like it, it wouldn't be worthy of the title of Mission Impossible. So, I mean, it, it has to be with a sliver of possibility, because otherwise you would have the team wiped out in every movie and, and the world would end, because that's what would happen. And I don't, I don't want to watch that film. That sounds like an action film directed by Lars von Trier. I don't want to see that. But, so with this film, you want <clears throat> characters that can hold together the explodo and the crazy action sequences. And if they have a little bit of depth to them, that's a bonus. And if the story is good, that's a bonus. And if, you know, if the, if the stunts and everything go above and beyond, if it actually looks like somebody took the time to write action sequences that rock and take it to the next level, that keep going to the next level. Like, for example, everyone's seen it. Jurassic Park, the sequence where they're in the car, they're in, the, like, the SUV that's stuck in the tree and getting out of the SUV and getting out of the tree where that entire sequence is just like, oh, no, oh, oh, now there's something else, and now there's something else. So, and it's not stupidly done, it's well orchestrated. Well, guess what? I am happy to report that this film is like that. It plays pretty much all of its cards. They're very well executed and very well orchestrated. In fact, halfway through the film, I just wanted to ring up and say, excuse me, Mr. Brad Bird, could would you be interested in directing a Bond film next? Because I think we could do something for that. I would go see a Brad Bird directed Bond film at this point. Right? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even have said that after watching The Incredibles, just because, I mean, there's a big difference between animation and live action. <clears throat> and not to say, I don't think, he's obviously proven he can direct live action, and live action, action. So, um, but anyway, I'm happy with the film. I'm happy I went to go see it. Um, Tom Cruise is good. Jeremy Renner's good. Simon Pegg is fantastic. He's Simon Pegg. Um, and you've got, uh, like I said, they, they've written a sequence of events that actually makes sense. You know how I like to turn my brain off during an action film if warranted. This, I sort of had to keep my brain about halfway on because the plot was a little complicated, but not in a bad way. In a, in a, oh, this is going to pay off if I actually pay attention way, yes, brain wants to stay awake kind of way. You know what I mean? So, 
I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the action sequences. I'm happy that despite the fact the second trailer seemed to give away a ton of stuff about the film, that it didn't give away everything. Because that's what I was afraid of. So even the things that you knew were coming, um, they didn't come uh, exactly... It, it, it wasn't obvious how they showed up. Does that make any sense? The delivery method for them to get there and the reason why they happened weren't, uh, weren't entirely guessable. So even though you knew something was coming, they didn't make it so that you were just bored and waiting for it. Like, like another Tom Cruise film, Last Samurai. We know you're going to put on the armor, Tom. It's in the poster. Would you just put on the armor already, please? That sort of thing. It's not like that. So, um, and, and here's the thing. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like I'm rambling because it's an action film. You can only say so many things about, wow, things blow up pretty. But, I mean, it's cool. you got cool gadgets that aren't completely insane. Um, you've got the characters that are well written. The only, here's the thing. The only thing where I thought they almost, almost crossed over the line was, and this happens with action films, because action films are great when stuff's blowing up and people are getting punched in the face. But when they have to bring the film to a halt or slow it down to 35 miles an hour in order to do some character depth stuff, that's when most action films lose it. I mean, if they've done everything else right, they can lose it there. And they almost did the whole teamwork angle to the point where I was about to start biting on one of my fingers, okay? But they pulled back at the last second, okay? So, so kudos to that. They probably could have done something with that to smooth it out a little bit. But beyond that, I was fine. They never slowed the film down, you know, lower than 35 miles an hour. It's like in speed. They never let the bomb go off on the bus, all right? So it was fine. Um, so, yes, I, 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 that was about the only problem that I had with it. Everything else, gorgeously shot. Music was great. Effects were great. Gadgets were great. What? The music. <laughs> the music! There was a musical score involved with the film that that was based on the theme, and then they had at least three oh. different orchestrators. Why are you laughing? The awesome music at the beginning, which I will not spoil. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, that the, the usage of one song is more usage of one song also as well. It's funny. Uh, yes, and there's enough humor in it to keep it going um, so that you're not sitting there uh, mulling over the fact that the world could end. So... There you go. I was, I was confused. What are you talking about? Music, music is an important part. Do not denigrate Michael uh, Giacano, whatever his name is. I can't say names. He knows that. He watches these. He knows. Anyway, <clears throat> so what I would say is this. They're doing the IMAX preview this weekend. Um, and I know I've, I wrote an article where I wasn't big on IMAX. I was actually kind of pleased with this one. Maybe it's just because the one at the Mall of Georgia isn't very good. I don't know. But... Uh, so I would say, if it's your thing to see this on an IMAX screen, go see it this weekend. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, especially, and if you liked Mission Impossible 2, this one's going to blow your mind. Because it's going to be like, the, it's going to be like the difference between, you know, it's going to be the difference between, um, nothing's coming to mind. It's going to be the difference between something that was, was not very good to something that was amazing. There you go. That'll be the difference. Be the difference between be the difference between uh, vanilla ice cream that you bought uh, at uh, you know at Kroger that had that it was on sale because it was old uh, compared to Ben and Jerry's vanilla ice cream. That's what it's going to be like for you. So I almost envy you. Anyway, so that's Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol. Uh, very pleased. As far as cups go, I'm. I am waffling back and forth in my head between three and a half and four. I'm leaning towards four because I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I like that. When I pay money to see a film, I would like to enjoy myself. Unless I'm going to see a film where I'm not going to enjoy myself. Like, I don't know, Requiem for a Dream. I don't, I didn't exactly skip out of that one, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so I, I will put, check the post on Need Coffee for the final cup rating and we'll put it there. I don't know what else to say, uh, other than, uh, Simon, you're awesome. Anyway, so, uh, that's it for This Way Homer. We'll be back for more because there's lots 
lots of films coming out and lots of films coming out that uh, that I wish were coming out sooner and I gotta wait till January for when other places in the country are getting it before then. I'm looking at you, Tinker Taylor. So, uh, thanks to everyone who watches these things and uh, I would say this, if, uh, if you do enjoy Way Homers, uh, if these enlighten you in any way or entertain you, perhaps just a skosh, um, what, uh, what we ask is please uh, share it with anyone. Uh, whether it's on Facebook or Google Plus or StumbleUpon, we love StumbleUpon, um, and uh, or Twitter, wherever, and uh, and just share it with someone. If you enjoy this, take a second. If you go on Need Coffee, the buttons are all there. You can share it. It just takes a second, and it means a lot to us. So we appreciate it. Uh, so until next time, uh, we'll see you then. Bye.